I think it has Zippo flavor, but a lot of people like it. So if that's what you like, make your turkey recipe. Make the meatloaf for your dinner the night before, and then so it's and then the next day you're going to uh, and that helps make it more solid, so you can cut it too. Yeah, really and then and then I think it's easier when it's colder mm. to cut it. Mm. Yeah, very good. Nice and fluffy, mm. you know. So here's the beef. Hi, this is Judy Keys, and welcome to Cooking for All Seasons. And today I have a very good friend of mine, Rochelle. Very good, for a very, long time. For a long time. Rochelle and I have known each other for... More than we're going to tell. More than we're going to tell you. But... <laughs> Just because we were 15 at the time. Okay, so don't calculate it, but it's been a long time. So I asked Rochelle to come today and um, to be with me because these are some of the foods that I know that she likes. You know, she's not a real picky eater, but she little. has a little bit of a, I don't know what you'd say. Food challenged. Food challenged. Oh, okay. That's a new one, huh? So what are some of the things? Mushrooms. Uh, well, is it easier to mention what I do like or what I don't like? Okay, <laughs> okay, that's a short list. <laughs> I get teased about it all the time. So what, what are your most favorite things? Oh, it's, you know, it's not bad. It's just certain things I don't like. Okay, like so. The, like the mushrooms and certain herbs and. Yeah, she doesn't particularly care for rosemary, which, which is kind of understandable because the unfortunate thing is that when people do use rosemary, they use such a tremendous amount of it that it has really, a, uh, it's an overstatement of, of flavor and I remember because we went out to lunch a couple weeks ago and um, she ordered a chicken on a you know just like a chicken breast on a salad and it was highly seasoned and the main seasoning was rosemary and while some people really like the flavor if you don't like the flavor it it can kill everything because it, it does it over it overpowers everything right it really does. And we didn't, or I didn't know it was going to have rosemary on it until yeah, I took so a bite into like, it. was like, okay, that's it. No I'm more. Not, no more. I'm not eating that. So um, what, other, what other things? I'm just trying to. Mushrooms. I don't, you know, mushrooms, a lot of people don't like mushrooms because they don't like the texture of the mushrooms. It's not necessarily always the flavor of it. It's that sort of spongy sort of texture type of maybe. Yeah. That, Plus, I just don't like the flavor of it. Oh, you don't like the flavor? Mm -mm. But I bet you, the smell. I, the sm I bet you she probably eats things that have mushroom essence in them, and you probably don't even realize. Especially if you eat Italian food, because a lot of times they sort of. Are you going to keep me from Italian now by telling me these secrets? No, I'm not telling her. <laughs> but I have some porcini, uh, like mushroom. It's like a dust. And I've had it. Probably. Oh, it was great. <laughs> It's sort of like people who don't like anchovies. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Yeah, but you eat Worcestershire sauce. Mm. You do. You don't know it. Okay, I'm learning all kinds of stuff about myself today. Well, because a lot of times in food, uh, prepared food, they use Worcestershire sauce because it's like a salt and stuff and it has a mm, lot of flavor. So, and a lot of people don't realize that that's where, that's where that comes from. And uh, anchovies are that sort of underlying flavor of, of a lot of foods that you're not quite... Is that you know? Yeah. So today, though, I picked a real simple one. So we're this is called good food and easy cooking. Okay, and um, these are the things that we're going to make. And her husband is standing over there making goo goo faces at us, <laughs> making us laugh. So but we're ignoring him. So. We're, <laughs> But you'll see him later when he has to taste what we cook. So if he bothers us too much and we make boo-boos and we burn the food, then that's he what he'll be tasting. That's what he has yeah. to eat. That'll be the consequence. That's his consequence. So we're making a grilled meatloaf sandwich. We have two kinds of, of meatloaf that I've made. I made one. It's a chicken and turkey. And I know she's like, because she doesn't. Oh, uh, I know. Wait a minute. Okay. There only we go. eats <laughs> white, only eats chicken breast. Right? Right. Okay, see, I remembered. Not the thighs. And not turkey. Call white. And, not, and no turkey. Unless it comes off of a turkey at Christmas or Thanksgiving. Nothing. Yeah, turkey's for the holidays, not to ground, in right. my opinion. So, I mean, everybody has their food 
things, you know? Uh, but she does like meatloaf, so. And then we're making homemade tomato soup, and I know she likes that. Mm -hmm. And we're making smashed potatoes with, and I know, I know she likes this, with cheese sauce. However, however, today we're going to sneak a little tiny piece of rosemary into it, and I know she's still going to eat it because um, the, the smashed potatoes are made with some smoked Gouda cheese, and the Gouda cheese, the smoked Gouda cheese is, is kind of strong, and the, the fresh herbs, uh, the sage and the thyme and the little bit of rosemary and the green onion sort of kind of mellow out that flavor. She's looking at me yeah, like... I'll trust her. I'll try it. I don't know. But after this many Very few years, things of yours have I not liked. Yeah, so. she's been pretty good. And, and I know she likes this. These are red velvet trifle cupcakes. That's why I'm here. That's why... <laughs> she <laughs> overpassed everything else and <laughs> head right for the, straight cupcakes. To the cupcakes. So let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is... And I've already made this. This is basically a cream sauce. It's just... Uh, butter, flour, uh, some milk, half and half, and uh, it has some cheddar cheese in it, and it has a smoked Gouda in it. So we're going to let it sort of warm up here, and what I'm going to do now is then chop up. What did I do with them? Where'd they go? Okay. Who moved? Oh, What is it I you're did. looking for? Hold on. Whew, I'm back. I moved the herbs. And, uh, I mean, if you don't have these, don't worry about it. I don't want you to go out and spend, you know, a fortune on herbs. Now, which ones are these? Which herbs? But I grow, I grow them. And right. you know something? If you get a chance, you know, they're pretty. These, these herbs grow really good. The thyme and uh, sage and rosemary. They grow, huh? Another one of my favorites. In fact, that whole song. You know that song, Rosemary's? <laughs> I don't like any of those things. Parsley, sage, rosemary, yeah, and thyme. But th these things really do grow very easily in your garden. So, um, and you can use the, and the one thing is that these herbs stay around all year long. So you don't have to like, uh, they aren't going to die out. Um, things like, um, uh, Okay, my mind went bike. Um, basil is going to die out. But what we're going to do is when we make the tomato soup, we're going to use some, some basil. But what I do at the end of the year is I take all my basil because I know it's just going to like rot out and just get all brown and everything. So I pick it all and I just take it and put it in the Cuisinart or anything you've got to cut it up and then just put it, mix it with some olive oil and uh, just stick it in a baggie and put it in the freezer. You don't, don't put garlic in it. Don't put, you know, don't make pesto with it. Just a little bit of olive oil with it. And then you can use it in anything. But you just freeze them by themselves, right? And then you mix Well, this in. is the basil, yeah. The, right. For these, they stay, this, the, you know, um, thyme and rosemary and, and sage actually stay around all all year long, you don't have, but the basil, oh, okay. but the basil will uh, die out at the end of the the season, but uh, you know, but it's oop, oop, a little too high. Okay, we've got so see you can can you see this? It's just a cheese sauce, and, and you know what? If you don't want make your own cheese sauce. You know what they have that would be really good? Um, they have these cans of, uh, you know, like you make nachos with? And they have these small cans of cheese sauce that are already made for nachos. Oh, I think I've seen You could seen just them. use this. And you could just change it up, put another can of chilies in there or something like that, or put some olives in it and stuff. I mean, you could just dress that up. You could chop some green onions into it or something and just put that over the potatoes. You don't have to make this. The whole thing. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of different ways of, of making this. You know, the idea was just to make something simple. You don't have to sit there and mash the potatoes. I'm just going to show you 
the potatoes right now after I get this off of here. But I think this is kind of it, kind of fun. Well, this this part. What's well, fun for me? I like to do this, but <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time. I am. Um, here, let me show you the move the knives. These are the mash, the smashed potatoes. And all I did was boil them. Now, some of these uh, are um, just regular russets and a couple, I think I had a couple of uh, um, Yukon Golds. And so I put so that in there. So you just boiled those and then just smashed yeah, them? Yeah, I just boiled them and you can see they just kind of, some of them just kind of fell apart. And so we're just going to chop this up. And uh, it just kind of adds a little bit of a flavor to the, you know, to the cheese sauce. But uh, you don't have to, like I said, you know, however you want, if you want to use a, even a can of, um, you could actually add a can, use a can of, I was going to say cream and mushroom. Okay, wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but. I mean, for those of you who do like mushroom Which soup. Which is probably 99% yeah, of people. You could actually use a can of cream and mushroom soup. Put I'd probably add maybe a half a can of cream to it or something like that. And then just add some cheese to it and put it over the potatoes and put some herbs in it or something like that. Or I think they actually make a cheese sauce. So what we're just do is you can see it just chop. We're just so you just put, put that in, in after yeah. the, it's all done. Yeah, you know, because... Then we're just going to add some green onions. Or, you know, if you like regular onions, I would probably, if I was going to put, like, a regular onion in, I'd probably saute it first. Okay. I wouldn't just put a raw onion in because, unless you like raw, I mean, if you like raw onions, that, that's fine. You could use a, an onion, you could use a shallot, you could use just about anything, you know, that you like. But I think the, the onion kind of tastes good. And like I said, the only thing that's in this cheese sauce is, um, so it has a little bit of fresh nutmeg, it has a little bit of dry mustard, and uh, we're just going to put this in here. And then just, you know, and then we're just going to stick it in the oven. So what, you pour that over the potatoes and then yeah. put it in the oven? Yeah. And just let it just bake it? Just let it, it bake, yeah. You want to taste it? Mm -hmm. I know. I think you're going to like it. Huh? Let's taste it for salt. See if it has a, you know, when I cook your potatoes, you want to put a little bit of salt. It, it, yeah, it's, it could use a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Okay. But when you boil your potatoes, make sure you put a little bit of salt salt in the water oh, because good. huh? It's good. Even with rosemary, mm -hmm. huh? So yeah. She ate it. I knew she would. Because I don't I don't taste it. You don't taste it, but it's there. It, it's just a little bit of there. And it cuts some of the gouda. Yeah, it does. Because I'm not. I like gouda cheese, but I'm not real fond of it being real. It, it's kind of. I'm not real fond of real heavy smoked things. But if you just like gouda, just use gouda. Gouda, gouda. Okay, and then it's kind of a cheater's way of making stuffed potatoes, huh? Oh, it looks good. And then just kind of, you just want to, whoa, oh, we got overflow. Just want to kind of mix it around a little bit. Of course, you don't have to pile it up like I did, but you made enough potatoes for the neighborhood. But I just get so excited, you know. I just you do get excited with your cooking. Huh? I know I do get excited. It's okay. The one thing is that this won't over. It there's not a lot of. It's not liquidy, and it's not like there's like milk in here, you know, like a lot of heavy liquids. So it's not going to really overflow when it's cooking, the cheese will sort of set up in the potatoes. Sort of like, uh, what do you call it, potatoes? Um, gratin scalloped. potatoes, scalloped, sort of a cheater's way of making 
I'm sure you guys heard me pound on that, right? Okay. Now I guess I have to clean it up a little bit, huh? But... I mean, you could sprinkle uh, some um, Parmesan over the top. You could uh, put some paprika. You could put some more onions. You could do, am I like dripping all over the place? No, I think it's more on this side. OK, you saw me. I licked my finger. You might want to cut that out. <laughs> what, my finger? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so i'll just wipe the side and then you know what we'll put this in the oven okay that's good sign of a good cook when she likes her own stuff right yeah well you know somebody's got to eat it I'm just gonna yeah but we're always here. available <laughs> Yeah, I'm just wiping this side so it doesn't uh, drip. Okay. Let's put it in the oven. I'm on your way. So can you guys see me? Okay, I'm just going to put this in the oven. Whoops. Okay, so I have it at about, oh, for today I have it kind of low because we're doing a lot of cooking, so it's like at about 300. Because basically everything's cooked, and what you really want to do is just warm up the potatoes and uh, get the cheese to melt around. Because technically you could eat it just like it is. I mean, mm -hmm. it's all cooked. Yeah, and it's warm from the yeah. sauce. So, and if your potatoes are, are, you're just taking your potatoes out of your, uh, you know, you've just boiled them, they're going to be pretty hot. So, now, on to the next, on to the next venue. Soup. Soup is next. I have my spoon and my tomatoes. Oh, lethal, huh? <laughs> so we're going to make some homemade tomato soup. Well, I want to just take a minute out. I know it's always more than a minute, but I, I want you to use crushed tomatoes. However, crushed tomatoes, and, and I, I know it's not to show brands, but this brand in crushed tomatoes is a real heavy crushed tomato. I mean, if you can see, I mean, this is heavy. This is almost like a real heavy tomato sauce, more so than just crushed tomatoes. But there are, I mean, every brand is kind of different. Mira Glen, I would try, I think it's Mira Glen Orga Organics is good. Um, use uh, some San Marzano crushed tomatoes. And they might be a little lighter and uh, not quite, this is a real dense. Can you see how dense this is? I so mean, that helps for soup. Well, it, it just means that you're going to have to thin it out a little bit more because otherwise it's going to be too, too, thick. too thick. So we're just going to put in um, about, well, well, we'll make the whole thing. And, and the, the only thing I can say is when you're making this soup is you really, you really have to kind of um, do it to your own taste. I mean, um, a couple of a uh, couple of cups of uh, crushed tomatoes to a couple of cups of chicken stock to a cup of whipping cream, and I mean, this is so easy. And then here I have some chicken stock, and I made this chicken stock with uh, it's called better than bouillon. Oh, I haven't seen that. It's kind of cool. Um, you know, if you if you don't. You know, you can get this like at Costco and stuff like that. And it comes in a pretty big jar and it's really worth it because you just keep it in the refrigerator and you can make chicken stock all the time. If you don't have time, you don't have to buy it in the can, but it really works really so good. So what do you do with that? You just put like a teaspoon or so in a cup of water, but you know, smell, it, smells real, it smells very nice. Oh, it does. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. So it makes it, it, makes it easier to, and I, it's a, much less expensive than buying chicken stock in, in the cans. I mean, if you want to use organic, that's, you know, that's okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit more water. This is, this measures, this measures two cups. So actually I put in about three cups and we'll see 
what the consistency is of this. Um, this is really, this is really a soup that is really more to what your your liking is. I mean, as far as consistency, you know, and so that's it. No, we're maybe oh. we're gonna put it. Okay, wait. I'll be right back. I'm gonna run over here. I know you can hear me. And what I'm grabbing is, remember I was talking about my, oh, herbs. My, <laughs> this is my basil from, from the, the summer that I just, all I do is crush it up in the Cuisinart or a little whatever, whatever you have, chop it up or whatever, and then I just mix it up with some olive oil, and I, but I don't put any uh, seasoning in it. And then I just lob off a hunk of it, and there it goes. You know, instead of having to go and buy, you know, a whole thing of basil. If you don't want to use basil, let's make it Mexican. You can put chilies in this. You could put uh, cilantro. You could saute some onions. You could, I mean, you can do all kinds of things with this. I mean, what do they make that? Uh, Seems like a simple soup. It is. It is very simple. And I'm going to become a gourmet after this. A gourmet. Well, this is not really for me. But, but it is. I mean, you know, <laughs> hey, they, they... Well, for somebody that doesn't cook a lot, yeah, walk, and, you know, it's, this is, and then makes it just, easy. And then the diet stuff is the heavy cream. The whole thing? Yeah. Oh. Okay, don't want to use heavy cream in it. Use milk. Don't want to use milk. I don't know what soy would taste like. I don't know. You'd have to really try that. Because soy has a definite, distinct flavor to yeah. it. So I don't know, really. Um, the only thing is that we're going to add to this is a couple of teaspoons of sugar. And uh, we'll add that in in a little while because I don't have the sugar with me right now. It's in the other room. I forgot. But I wanted to put some in. And that's kind of dependent on really... In fact, we'll taste it first and see if we need it. Because... You know, when you make, some people make spaghetti sauce and stuff, they always put like a teaspoon of sugar in it. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes the tomatoes are too acidic and you need to cut it down a little bit. So that's why you, and it's the same as putting, making the tomato soup. However, if you look in the back of a can of tomato soup, you'll notice the sugars are really high. They use a lot of sugar in their stuff. This kind of cuts down the sugar and it also cuts down on the, uh, okay, I'm just going to pour it <laughs> Okay, so we use the whole thing. <laughs> well, there's a, this is a lot. Well, you, could, a lot. you could use half of that and half milk if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, right? you don't have to, you know, I know we have to be good, but like I said, if you don't want to use the cream, can you, would you like me to tilt this? Here, how's that looking? Looks good. It smells good already. It gets it really nice. But we are going to put a little bit of salt. And you'll notice there's a lot less salt in this than, than what, and a little bit of pepper. Oh, yeah, because like canned soup has a lot of sodium in it, right? Oh, yeah. And, and these, you know, I don't think, I'm not sure, but most, you can actually get, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, some tomatoes that are no salt. You know, that'll say right on the can, organic tomatoes, no salt added and stuff like that. Okay, the next thing is a little bit of butter. Just okay. a little bit. <laughs> okay. So in other words, don't go from here to the cardiologist's office. No. Or if you do, okay. just see, look at that's not too much. Remember, this is going to feed a lot of people, and we may have to, to thin it out. So, so now we're going to let this cook. We're going to put it on the back burner, and then we're going to be back with you guys. Um, so that was, I mean, that was pretty simple. Very simple. I thought it was, when you said that wasn't going to be the first thing you're making, I was surprised because I thought the soup would take the longest. Yeah, well, it isn't. I mean, you know, like if you had leftover veg, okay, the night before you had leftover vegetables. Throw it in there. Throw it in here. You probably don't want to leave them, you know, it just depends. If you want to let them cook the whole time, but if you want it at the end, I'd probably throw them at the end, like broccoli or cauliflower or beans or whatever kind of vegetables you had left. I probably would throw them in at the very end just to get them heated through. Uh, if you throw them in now, they're going to sort of dissipate out. 
hey, this would be up to you. Sprinkle a little Parmesan cheese on top. Hey, you've got an awesome meal. You could even cook some little macaronis and throw it in this with your vegetables, mm. which would be really good. Yeah, be and you know what? If you let your kids do this, your grandchildren, they'd really enjoy this because they could put those um, oh, those little those little, little uh, letters in. Yeah. Now they make all kinds of macaroni with you know characters and stuff like that. I, this would be great. Mm -hmm. I think this would be great. So okay, well we're gonna we're gonna come right back. We're gonna show you the meatloaf. We're gonna start on the meatloaf sandwiches, and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Now we're back. Meatloaf. <sighs> okay. Beef meatloaf. Beef, uh, grilled, uh, sautéed onions, salt, pepper, eggs, uh, oatmeal, uh, a little Worcestershire, basic meatloaf. Okay, use your meatloaf recipe. This I like is the idea of the oatmeal though. I never thought of that. Yeah, instead of uh, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs in this one, oatmeal. Good for you. Good for your heart. Um, you know, it's just. You know, some tomato juice, just very... Tomato juice? Yeah. Okay. Very, very basic. You know, so, okay. Got Sound it. Good. Mm -hmm. This is, the, can you see it? This is the, this is the chicken and turkey. No, I'm not a real fan of turkey, ground turkey, because I think it has Zippo flavor, but a lot of people like it. So if that's what you like, make your turkey recipe. This one's got, uh, and I ground the chicken myself. Really? Yeah. I, it, I had the turkey and then I just took a couple of chicken uh, breasts and just ground them up myself. Added that with like about, I think it was about three quarters of, a, I think it was about a half a pound, a pound and a half of chicken breasts and about a half, about maybe a half a pound or so of turkey meat and uh, so this one's got a little bit of thyme in it uh, some uh, eggs it's got this one does have breadcrumbs in it this one has some uh, did I say thyme it has mm -hmm. a little crunch of thyme in there salt pepper a little Worcestershire and um, some ketchup and a little bit of uh, they both have a little bit of uh, garlic granules not fresh garlic but garlic granules and they both have sauteed onions I don't like raw onion because what well, you can if you want it. I mean, I mean, if that's the way you're, the, that's the way you make your meatloaf, that's fine. But I like when you saute the onions. I think it gives off more flavor into the meat. You know, when the onions are sauteed, mm -hmm. you know, they're caramelized. I think it gives more flavor. If you would like to make this uh, Mexican style or Italian style or, or whatever, and you, that's the way you want your sandwich, it's fine. The reason why I made them sort of without any defined flavor, you know, like either Italian or Mexican or, or whatever, you know, by putting in oregano or chilies or something is because when we make the sandwiches, it's at that point that you can decorate them, you know. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take and make some slices. Okay, so what you do, you're going to make the meatloaf for your dinner the night before. And then, so it's and then the next day you're going to, uh, and that helps make it more solid so you can cut it too. Right? Yeah. And then, imagine. and then I think it's easier when it's colder Cold. to cut it. Um, but you know, maybe make it in the morning and make these at night or something like that. So you can see it's pretty, it smells good too. And, uh, you just kind of cut it. I mean, if you, like really thin slice, you could do, you could do real thin slices too because it holds up pretty well. And you can see mm -hmm. it, it really does. Michelle's like, I don't care. I don't eat turkey. <laughs> no, it looks good. But it does. It's it's very nice. I I liked it. And I'm not like I said, I'm not a real fan, but I like the chicken in there. It smells good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it really it does. does. It smells really good. And a lot of people eat meatloaf sandwiches, cold meatloaf sandwiches. That's very popular. But the idea of this was to create something for your, uh, you know, like an indoor hamburger instead of because it's, you know, if you're going to do this in the winter or something like that or something you can't get out to the 
the barbecue or something. It's kind of fun. You know, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. And I thought the kids might enjoy it. If you want, now we're going to grill this. We're going to grill the meatloaf itself to heat it up and sort of get a crust on it. And then we're going to put it on the bread with the cheese and the mustard and whatever, you know, whatever, some bacon and whatever you like on it. But if you would rather, um, you know, not do that, you don't really have to do that. But see, it smells really good. Yeah, I, I like, I like meatloaf. It's really funny. My father doesn't like meatloaf. It's funny what people think about meatloaf, but it's really... Yeah. I mean, a lot of restaurants that you go to now, they have meatloaf sandwiches on the, yeah. on the menu. Yeah. Well, it's a definite comfort food, yeah. you know? So, it just... Uh, so, let's see. So, you really can get a lot out of... This is... This meatloaf... This was two pounds. And, and I mean, we could have cut it thinner, and we could have fed a lot, but look at... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... So maybe if you, depending on how big your bread is, you could make at least four sandwiches out of that. Oh, yeah. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I've already made, because I was like obviously testing and messing around with it, I've already made like three or four sandwiches. So, and this was, this was like three pounds of beef. So it really goes far, you know. And it's kind of fun for, I think, you know, for a party or something like that. Just have it, everybody can put what they want Put what they it. want on yeah, it. make their own. So we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in the pan because we want to kind of get a little bit of a crust on it. Oh, that, that's heated up fast. Can you hear that sparkle? That's what you want. So I think I'll, I'm gonna, I mean, we're going to put a couple of each. And I just want to I just want to do these because I want you to see what it what it really looks like, you know. So the different I mean we have some different toppings, you know, to go with it. We're gonna I have some herb butter to put on the bread for the uh, the beef one uh, to grill that one. Just some plain butter for the the chicken one because for the chicken one we're gonna put some um, we're gonna put some chutney some mango chutney with mm. it. I just thought that sounded kind of good. You know, this is from Trader Joe's and I just want to say, hey, shout out to Trader Joe's and they're one of my, they're my sponsor today and thank them for all the goodies. And then for the beef one, we're going to do barbecue. And I and Pappy's makes a barbecue sauce. And I don't know if a lot of people aren't familiar with it. They, I know a lot of people know that they make, I don't have anything to do with Pappy's, but I know that they make a like they make a dry uh, rub, mm -hmm. but I found this in Sol actually in Salinas. So I'm telling you at a uh, Smart and Final. Oh wow! You know, so it's not it's not all over the place. And then I have some bacon, and I'm going to tell you about this bacon. The other night my friend was over, and she told me about cooking this bacon, and I I was flabbergasted. I I don't know if you can really tell the difference. This bacon was pot, was dipped in flour. And then fried? And then fried. Wow. I, and what it does is it cause the, the bacon doesn't shrink as much and it gets real crispy real fast. So she said, try it. So I did. So that's you know, that's just kind of a little little thing to kind of spark your day if you eat bacon but look at i can you see i don't i don't know well that one got kind of it gets i will have to warn you though it does get brown or black fast because it's got the 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 flour on it and i mean i'm being honest i mean this is this was one but i mean it still tastes okay it didn't i caught it in time but do if you're going to do it in a pan and you're frying it and it's got the flour on it you just have to be really careful but but see the the difference in yeah, the you can kind of see it. It's 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 really interesting. But I want you guys to try it. Just flour it, and then just put it in your pan, okay? And just fry it like you normally. Normally, when I cook bacon, I bake it in the oven. So that's my neck. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna try it because I usually do a whole maybe like two or three pounds because I'm usually cooking for more than <laughs> two people. 
So, and then I would I cook it on a rack in the oven. So I'm gonna try that. But yeah, you can you can definitely. Yeah, you it can almost definitely looks like see it. you know what it looks almost like. Almost like it's got brown sugar or something. Yeah, like it looks almost like fried chicken. Yeah, it kind of looks like <laughs> different. Okay, so there's another ten pounds for this year. Um, and, and, but, and the year just started. And the year just started. So let's let's see how we're doing here. So those are the kinds of things. And somebody said when we were, you know, we said, okay, we'll be right back. So Rochelle's husband said, oh, you know, you could take the meatloaf and cut it up and put it in the tomato soup. Not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to get him a cooking we show. We need to get him a cooking show. Are we, get, are we getting practice toast in here? Yeah, he has to practice. Yes. Yeah. Start any time. <laughs> <laughs> now, you like to cook. Rochelle likes to cook. She has beautiful children. Three, two. Two. Two beautiful two. children. Grown ups. And they have uh, seven. Seven grandchildren. And two kids. I have this many grandchildren. I don't know what to tell you, but. Well, the one thing is. This could go really fast. <laughs> this could go, but this is a good thing. Yeah. That, that it would is. be a good thing. It is. My daughter's a firefighter, and she was telling me that uh, in the house, in the firehouse, when they make meatloaf, they actually do make sandwiches the next day. With they them. do? They, they fry it up and make sandwiches. So I felt like I was right in there with the, with the with group. With firefighters. With the group. Yeah. She's, uh, you know, I guess they, they do. They eat, they eat pretty good, you know. We'll bring you to the firehouse one time and do a show there That's and what you, see, yeah. how, see how good they eat there. Got some good cooks there, right? Yeah, they really do. Yeah, they're, they know. really do. You know, they, well, they're known for it. So how are we doing here? Are we got, oh, oh, we do. Good. So, yeah. It's, can you guys see this? Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to, I'm turning them over so you can see. And then I'll tilt it up. I know, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. You see now? See how it's getting... It's getting brown. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to move this over to the stove and finish uh, doing the rest of these. And then we'll be right back and put the sandwiches together. We're back. OK, so see? See how it looks? Can you, can you see over there? See? It's all grilled now. Beautiful. It's good mm. enough to eat. It smells good. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we got that grilled, and now we've got this kind of bread, which is a, this one is, because I'm not going to trust my, because I've got so much. This is a Tuscan, a Tuscan a panini, sort of like. Um, I like this. This gets really crust, crunchy in the good. toaster. It looks good. So I got that. I think I'll put the beef in that one. And this is, a, this is just, a, this is a sliced sourdough, I believe. Yep, it is. I looked. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever kind of bread you like. I mean, if you like plain white bread, just use... The only thing I would say is that if you're going to use plain white bread, it has to be something heavy because now yeah. we're going to regrill it. So if it's not heavy enough, it's just going to sort of like splat out, you know. But if that's what your family likes, you do what your family likes. Um, everybody's going to say, well, why don't you just do panini? If you want to do it in a panini press, that's fine too. If you want to do it in a panini press, but you don't have a panini press, guess what you can use? Your waffle maker. Your waffle maker technically is like a panini press, except for it makes little waffle marks on your bread. I mean, people don't makes think sense. of that, but yeah. it, it really it really will work. You know, you, you have to clean it, obviously, because then when, next time you make pancakes, you're going to have uh, chicken drip or cheese drip or something. You know, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't go well taste with, so good. It doesn't go well with No. So I buttered the bread. You can see for this one and um, this is going to be the chicken and you're going to have to well oh, we're going to take oh that's why it's two slices per because the bread's so big yeah so you know i mean you have to make sure let's let's put another big one on here Oop. okay i'm using my fingers but i saw clean. her wash her hands so it's okay but actually Actually, in reality, let's do the cheese first because I remember I wanted to make sure, you want to make sure that it doesn't slide out. 
And so if you do, this is sort of a trick of which I obviously forgot. We're going to put cheese on this. And this is um, a combination of, uh, this is a, a Munz, no, this is a Colby Jack. So if you do that, and then put your meat on here. Oops, let's not forget his little extra. If you do this, then what will happen is the, the uh, bread will stick to the meat, and you don't have to worry about it falling apart. Put as much cheese as you want. How much cheese? She's not going to eat this one. OK. <laughs> now, the question is, do we or don't we? Do we put, and I decided that I wanted to put, and this is a mango ginger chutney. Oh. I'm kind of thinking, mm, no, I'm kind of thinking that we're going to smear oh. a little bit of this with a little bit of, uh, this is just some plain, uh, Dijon mustard. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the Dijon on here. And then, oops, then I'm going to smear it with a little bit of the mango chutney. Because see how nice it is? It's not, it's kind of chunky. So it's, it, and I think it's going to taste really good. So as you're going to get the, uh, the spice from the, the, the mustard, but the sweetness from the chutney, and then you got the cheese, and then uh, we're talking some good We're talking food. good food. And I think it'll taste good with this. OK? And then we're just going to put this in. Sizzle. We have sizzle. We have sizzle. We have sizzle, so we don't want to burn it. So let's turn this down. So your meat is very is basically already warm. So basically what you're trying to do is melt the cheese into the meat. Okay. I mean, if you want more of this later, if it tastes really good and you still want more, you can put it on later. I mean, is it? I just kind of wanted to see what it's going to taste like. Okay, next up. Let's see. This one is a this one's for the beef and this is going to be this is an herb butter. So we're going to put this on this. Try to, I know it sounds silly, but if you try to match the bread up, say. No, it doesn't sound silly. So it that fits otherwise. Together. To me, I want to try to make You don't want an end piece and a big piece together. Yeah, because your, your, uh, the meat will like begin to slide all around and everything. But I think this is going to taste good. Now, for this one, For this one, I have, I'm thinking, so I have some Munster cheese. The other one that's really good on the chicken, the other one that's really good on the chicken is, the, uh, how, is some jalapeno pepper oh, the cheese, jack some, cheese, some jack pepper cheese. I have some in the refrigerator. Maybe we'll make one with that, too. So everybody, I'm, I'm sorry, I hope you make these at home. I think you'll be, I think you'll have fun sort of doing this. Everybody can kind of pick out the kind of, you put out a bunch of stuff and everybody can kind of pick out and make their own, you know, uh, sort of delicacy. What do you think? You think that's enough? Yeah. Yeah, that's enough. You know, you don't want to overstuff it. Well, I do. Some people overstuff it, but I mean, what do you think? I was kind of thinking, I was going to put barbecue sauce on this one. I think yeah, I think a little barbecue sauce on this. Happy's barbecue. Happy's barbecue sauce. I think just just a hit. You know, we're not we're not going to put a lot, but I think oh, I think that's going to taste good. So, mm, smells good. And we're just going to flip this over. Can you More sizzle. Can you hear them grilling? They're grilling away. Oh. Let's take a look at this. 
Let's take a look at this chicken one and see how we're doing. Ooh, it's getting brown. Mmm. Okay. I think we have meltdown here. Okay, now this would be the trick to flip it. Oh, oh. you did a good job. I would have had half the meat out. Well, the, that's the idea of, of doing the cheese. See, this, this one has the holes in it. This one has more holes in it. The beef one, because the panini, I mean, that style of bread. How's that? Are we looking pretty? Can you look, see How that? would it work, too, if you sprayed the pan? Would that help? Yeah. Ooh, I'm that's a, a good look. idea. I'm getting a funny that's look. That's a good idea. See, reach in there. Let's try that. Okay, then. I mean, there's always room for improvement. Are right you here? You know, yeah. Yeah. Slap your mama? It's a can I'm reading. <laughs> I don't know what's in that can, but that was okay. An this is label. some. This is actually some olive oil. So we'll try that. Let's try that. See, there's always. See, I was here for a reason. Mmm. Good idea, Rochelle. Thank you. What a team. Yeah. So what do you guys think? I thought that was a pretty good idea. Very nice. Thank you. So, and in actuality, you could, if you didn't want to use, obviously, a lot of butter and stuff, you could use a lot of, you know, you could Show use some of that. Huh? So, I'm going to continue doing this, get some of these out, and we'll be right back with you and uh, have dessert. And this is the part of the show that most people don't like, the yeah. dessert. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'll deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Could so you hurry up? <laughs> it's red velvet. Okay, <laughs> okay, so you saw it. Yes. It's red velvet. Um, all I did was make red velvet cupcakes, but I added some. Um, this is uh, some Dutch chocolate, and I added this actually into the mix. The mix because you can use you can use cake mixes and add your own little extra chocolate or add a hit of vanilla or something and it will change the flavor of the box mix mm -hmm. it really does and you know then you go well did you make that or is it box no it's mine it's like whatever you tell the truth tell the truth it's yours so what i'm going to do is all i'm going to do is i'm cutting like a little hole in here and these are these are kind of big cupcakes and then that's for you oh so instead of licking the bowl, they have mm, that. Very that good. good. Yeah. And then this is, you know that pie filling? This is a pie filling can? in the can. Oh. Yeah. But I had some fresh berries, so I put it in. So then you're just going to put some of that in here, in the middle. And that makes the trifle, see? And then the... The icing, whatever kind of icing you like, if you wanted to put like a cream cheese, it's fine. But I made mascarpone and whipped cream. Uh, so it's half, it's half and half. So it's 50% uh, mascarpone, 50% a heavy whipping cream. So it's a cup of whipping cream and a cup of uh, mascarpone and a cup of uh, powdered sugar and just enough cocoa to sort of give it a little bit of flavor. And then... I mean, it's not fancy, but it is good. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I could, if you wanted to, you could you could make this a little bit stiffer. Uh, you just have to, uh, you know, uh, mix it a little harder. Mm -hmm. Or if you use this, and you could pipe it on and make it fancy. But this is, this is, it, it tastes it good. It's good enough to eat. So that's it. I mean... You don't have to use red velvet. You could use actually use any kind of cupcake you wanted. If mm -hmm. you don't like that, you want just plain chocolate or vanilla, or if you wanted to put apple filling in something or whatever kind. I mean, it's well, I'm just fun. thinking of vanilla with peanut butter in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. See, give me those desserts. Those desserts, and then you could put a chocolate frosting yeah. on it. Okay. Well, um, our soup is done. 
and our potatoes are done, our meatloaf sandwiches are done, so we're going to put everything out. We're going to bring up a taster, but we're not going to blindfold them. We're going to make them look at it and then uh, see how he thinks. So we'll be right back. Hi. Okay, we're back. Everything is done. Looks okay. Great. How's it look? It's beautiful. This is this is Ken. This is Rochelle's husband, and he's volunteered. Oh, we what a to, job! <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> he brought his in, and he's going to be our our, what, our taste tester with Rochelle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test the tomato soup, and into the tomato soup we added a couple little teaspoons of sugar because I decided that it just needed a little bit of. You know, just a little sweetness added to it. Depending on the kind of tomatoes that you get, don't add the sugar until you taste it, though. You don't have to add a lot. And if you don't want to add it, don't. It doesn't need a lot of salt, but sometimes it does need a little taste of sugar. So go ahead, you guys. Okay. And taste that. And then I have these little tiny uh, croutons. If you, you know, you can add, like, anything you want to it. See if you like that. Very good. good. You like Very that? good. Mm -hmm. So you can add, like I said, you could, like, actually it was, mm. uh, Ken who said, hey, you can add in the, some of the, uh, the meatloaf into the tomato soup. So, hey, there's another whole idea right there, you know? Okay, so Ken, or Shell, doesn't, isn't going to eat the chicken one, turkey one, oh, so... But I just want to remind you, we did add in the bacon into the into the beef uh, uh, meatloaf sandwich. You can see, look at how crispy it came out. Mm, it's very nice. It's very good. So Thank there's you. Rochelle's. You got your fork. Got my fork. Okay, Ken got his fork. Okay. Get some potatoes. How could potatoes be bad? It's kind of nice. I mean, they're a lot less work. Mm. You know. Very good. Nice and fluffy, mm. you know? So here's the beef. <laughs> here's the beef. Oh, that's not Where's, where's the, the beef? beef? And here's the chicken one. So I hope you all enjoy and you'll try these. I think they're good. I think they're good recipes to make, you know? Oh my gosh. Does that taste good? Mm. It tastes good. It's just totally different. I mean, it doesn't even taste really like a hamburger because it's got all that extra flavor from being a meatloaf. It's delicious. So you could, I mean, put anything into your meatloaf that you like. I mean, if you wanted those to be like, you know, Mexican or something, put chilies into it. You know, if that was your theme and you could make beans and rice or something, it's just something different. You know, you're just trying to do a little something different and then keep the, keep the pricing down a little bit and not, you know, be just getting kind of outrageous. Okay, so Rochelle wants a Now, and I, I was wondering how what? somebody could eat a whole one of those sandwiches. Now I know why. Yeah, you could. It's delicious. I, I think yeah, you could. it's really good. So, what did, nice. did you like it? Really nice. How's the chicken one with the with the with the chutney in there? It's really nice. Really nice. Good, good sweet. It's good. So I don't interrupt me. I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Okay, so let's see. Who's gonna try this? Go ahead. I tried it already. How he doesn't want to get all over his face. Oh, okay, I won't let him get it over his face. I'll <laughs> cut a piece. I'm going to cut a little tiny piece, and then you can try it. But while he's trying that, I want to thank um, Trader Joe's, and I want to thank Rochelle thank for you. being here. Oh, here, did you get any of the jelly? Mm -hmm. you got to get the jelly. But uh, these are kind of fun, I think, you know. This is great. Cool. Look at that. Thank you. Mm. Thank you all. I wish you happy New Year's and good health. And try these. I think you'll enjoy them, and I think your kids will enjoy them. And uh, thank you, Rochelle. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. Thank goodness. you guys out there. And this is Cooking for All Seasons with Judy Keys. Okay. Up. Okay. I have my spoon. Hi. He has to say the five, four, three. Right. Yes. Okay. 
So when she stops like that, what will somebody be watching on the show? If they're watching the show. They won't see that. Oh, when you say we'll be right back with you? It yeah. just goes right back. It, it goes just right continues back. on. Yeah. It's not like TV where there's a commercial. No. Although we wouldn't mind that, then you somebody be paying us. Yeah. I pay you. I just keep trying to explain somebody that to else, you. Maybe. Somebody that gives green who, who instead yeah, of money, yeah. instead of food? Currency? You know that kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Let's do a few of these. Let's bring out the cupcakes. Oh, I waited so long. <laughs> See, I might have food issues, but not when it comes to sweets. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I can't tell you if a sweet I don't like. 